Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Amanda Star's Celebrity Perfume Review. So today, I'm happy to be bringing you guys my review of Sarah Jessica Parker's Stash. So this is her brand new fragrance launched this year, 2016. And in technicality, is her first fragrance launched in seven years, according to her. But I also don't believe that because she did launch um, Lovely Sheer earlier this year and SJP NYC EDP. So... But this fragrance has been shelved for about 10 years. Um, the fragrance was supposed to come out before Lovely. She had this concept and this idea of this fragrance before um, when she went into Cody to release Love. Excuse me, Lovely. This perfume idea was in her head. And Cody kind of talked her out of it because it, like, it wasn't a safe fragrance or whatever. I mean, Lovely is probably one of her best-selling fragrances. It, I mean, it sold millions and millions of dollars over the last 10 years and has created, you know, Lovely. There was, like, the liquid satin version and then there was, like, the Christmas version and then there was the anniversary edition and Lovely Sheer. So, it, I mean, it's gotten its spin-offs and it's had its, you know, own, like, sub-series with the Twilight little series that came off of it. So, but... She, I mean, that fragrance did really, really well for her, so in a way, it's good that Cody had asked her to step aside from this fragrance idea. But it's still good that she was able to, you know, pull back and say, yes, I would like to do this. So, here's my review of Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. So, the box looks like this, and it says Stash SJP, and it's kind of got like this, uh, it reminds me of like an athletic band-aid, kind of, if that makes any sense, um like swiped across the front it's a shiny glass box on the bottom here it says sarah jessica parker eau de parfum um elixir spray eau de parfum elixir vaporation 100 milliliters 3.4 ounce so the box is black except for on the back here you've got some gold writing like this all black on top it does really show like fingerprints so like if you fingerprint it it shows a lot um and then you've got the barcode on the bottom when you open it up you do have the sjp um beauty logo stuff on the inside Opens up like this, and then you pull out the little bag. So I have the 100 milliliter, so it comes with this little stash bag, that I call it. Um, and it says SJP, or stash SJP on the front here. Um, and it's got these gold little tassels. As you open it up, it opens up just like a normal thing, and the bottle comes out like this. And it says stash SJP. It's got that same kind of, what I call, athletic band-aid across the front here. Uh, which I find that really cool. You don't really see this a whole lot on fragrances, so it's cool that they did this. Um, it's very, very different from what you normally get for a celebrity fragrance, but um, she, I know she is trying to gear herself more as a designer than as a celebrity, because this is all launched, like, the lovely distribution center and stuff like that. So, like, she's trying to prove herself as a designer, because she did have the lovely series that came out, um, where there's a whole, like, clothing line. I know she's done some other clothing stuff as well. So I do find it really cool that she did a completely different approach with this. I don't know if it's with this or what it was, but this does remind me of almost alcohol. Like one of my friends said it reminded her of like a Crown Royal, how that whole thing set up. So it's very, very, very cool. Very like boozy alcoholic color. And then on the very, very top up here, it does say um, SJP right there. So, um, and then the sprayer is black with the black lid. So... I will tell you guys, I do not like this fragrance. I'm giving you guys this. I posted the image on Instagram and asked you guys if you wanted to see it. And you guys said you did. So I'm giving you guys this review because you asked for it. I don't like this fragrance. I'm actually probably going to end up returning it. Um, I bought it mainly for the concept. I really like the idea that this fragrance took, you know, essentially 10 years to create, 11 years to create, but it really kind of 7 years. They really kind of shelved this fragrance and pulled it back out and shelved it and pulled it back, and, you know, over and over and over again, and she really wanted to create a fragrance that, to her, was very different from anything else on the market. This is kind of in that market of almost niche fragrances, um, or really, really high-end designers. Um, other things that are really cool about this fragrance, they she took the concept of people do find sexiness in body odor, so there's a little bit of that kind of mixed in. There is no official notes. She did an interview with this fragrance and said there was no, like, mundane official notes, but there are the notes that they categories the fragrance with um a couple other things i you know as you guys know i like my fruitier sweeter tropical 
girly, fun, feminine fragrances. I don't really like anything that's heavy or masculine, and that's really what this fragrance is. Um, this is an Eau de Parfum. It retails $85, I believe, and then right around $75 for the 1.7, and then I don't remember how much the one ounce is, and then there is a one ounce perfume elixir, that or one ounce perfume oil, body oil that is $50, which is a little bit more concentrated version of this, and I can only imagine how strong that is. Um, when I got this fragrance, I... Um, was able to test it on my lunch break at work, and I used the rollerball, and I could smell it, like, at arm's length, I could smell it, without a doubt. Um, I ended up washing it off, I could still smell it, I covered it up, could still smell it. This is a powerhouse fragrance, without a doubt. Um, it's got 11 notes, and 8 of those notes are powerhouse, like, blockbuster notes. So, you've got 3 kind of supporting notes, but otherwise the rest are just blockbuster powerhouse, like, Normally, you wouldn't mix more than two of them in a normal fragrance. So, notes of this fragrance. Top notes are grapefruit zest, black pepper, and ar aromatic sage. Base notes are cedar, or middle notes are cedarwood, atlas cedar, cedarwood, um, patchouli, ginger lily, and pistachio. I'm stumbling on that. I'm so sorry. Base notes are olibanum, minosa wood, vetiver, and musk. So, this fragrance really kind of... It does change, um, when you first spray it, you get a little bit of the grapefruit zest and a little bit of the spiciness from the black pepper, but it's really kind of that olibanum, the base and the heart kind of create this, like, center foliage of, like, a really powerhouse mix. You do really get the, you get a little bit of the patchouli, it's not super there. The ginger lily I can get, because I get almost like that zing of ginger, um, which if you've ever smelled the ginger lily, it does kind of have that same ginger esque um that ginger has but it's also got like the floral um pollen -y note to it so it's really really nice the pistachio is kind of there i'm not getting a whole lot of it but it is a little bit there but what you're really getting is kind of that cedar wood you're getting the patchouli you're getting the olibatum you're getting the minosa wood it's all kind of coming together you get a little bit of the vetiver it's kind of adding a little bit of a greenness as a backup note but it's really not there the musk is kind of overtaken by all the other notes. This is very, 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 very heavy. Um, this is the kind of fragrance that you spray once on your wrist and you can dab, 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 and you'll be good. Um, I feel like if you were to overspray this, you're gonna kill a room. Um, very much a heavy nighttime, fall, winter fragrance. Um, she said that she wanted to create this fragrance that was very masculine and had no gender boundaries. So this, this fragrance is being marketed as a fragrance for human beings, which means your cat cannot have this fragrance, because, yeah, I'm joking, whatever. But anyway, um, it's a fragrance for human beings, so it's not a unisex, it's not a gender-neutral fragrance, it's a fragrance for human beings, which I really, really like, that they're not kind of slapping a unisex note on this. Um, it does have a very unisexy vibe, almost super masculine. Um, I feel like this is a fragrance that if you wore it, um, people would almost think you're wearing your boyfriend or your husband's fragrance because it is very, very, very heavy. And that is part of the reason I don't like it is because I don't like masculine fragrances at all. Um, I've made the joke many, many times that I'm a fruit who likes fruit. So, um, but lasting power, it lasts like 12 hours. I mean, I washed it off. I covered it up and like 12, 13 hours later, I could still smell the underlying of it. So, um, in my opinion, this reminds me of almost a mix between, um, Rebel Fuller, which is the black one by Rihanna, and Jessica Simpson's Fancy Nights, kind of. I mean, there's differences, but it does have that really kind of heavy powerhouse that those two fragrances have. Um, this is definitely something, if you are on the fence about it, I would not blind buy it. Because you're going to want to smell it first, because I bought it for the concept of it, and like I said, I'm probably going to end up returning it, just because I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of this. Um, and for the price... I did a good, I, I had quite a few dollars in points when I bought this, so I got a good deal on it, but at the same time, still for the price, it's not something that I would want to keep in my collection personally, just because I know the chances of me ever wearing it are very slim. I never wear Fancy Nights, I never wear Rebel Fleur, and that's the kind of vibe I'm getting out of these. When I did wear it, I couldn't go like a half hour before I had to wash it off, so it's, I mean, it's, it's strong, it's a powerhouse fragrance. I definitely feel like if this is your type of fragrance, it's something you could rock, and your people are gonna love you and ask you what you're, sm you know, what you smell like. Jessica, Sarah Jessica Parker has said when, um, 
she's worn this fragrance, people have stopped her and asked her what she's wearing. It is a very unique fragrance. It is a beautiful fragrance for the category it's in. I don't like that category, so that's just me. Um, I don't think this is a fragrance that I would wear in the spring and summer as it's really, really powerful. Um, I feel like this, like, with it being an eau de parfum, if they were to make, like, a straight parfum version, it would almost be, like, over overkill. Um, I feel like one to two sprays is enough, anything more than that, and you're gonna be kind of killing it. So, there you guys go. There is my review of Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. If you guys like this review, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't and you would like to, please hit that subscribe button down below. It does help, as always. You know, thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, A the S Perfume, and Instagram, Among the Stars Perfume. Links are in the description below. I will be doing my Q&A video at some point. I know I told you guys I keep it open for about a week. I will get it done relatively soon, so we'll see. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.